Hi, I'm Guillermina Gina Nunez M. Sherry, or Dr. Nunez on campus. Welcome to Women in Gender Studies. Uh, for me, it's wonderful to invite you to our program. Today, you're going to hear about our different faculty, the classes they teach, and the wonderful research and community engagement they're doing. I've been Director of Women in Gender Studies since 2015. I joined this program in the summer of 2015, but I've been an Associate Professor of Anthropology, and I joined UTEP in 2004-2005. So I've been here 15 years, going on 16. I am a, an applied cultural anthropologist, so that means I do research that has real life applications. I am a social scientist, but anthropology can be humanistic and also social science. And so I really love collaborating in my field and outside of my field. I specialize in the ethnography of the US-Mexico border. So everyday life of people on the border is what interests me. And many times we're responding to the needs of our community, whether it's immigration, whether it's human rights, whether it's women's rights and women's safety. We have a lot to offer in women and gender studies. It's an interdisciplinary undergraduate degree. We have a BA in women and gender studies. We also have a minor. But if you're a graduate student or if you're interested in coming back to school, we also have a graduate certificate in women's studies. And I've loved working with our students. They go on to do wonderful things. So what do you do with a degree in women and gender studies? You do whatever you want to, because it helps you understand the history of women's rights and women's struggles to be able to gain the right to vote, to be able to get some authority and some rights over our body and our minds, to be able to enter the workforce, to go to school, to enter any public space and not feel harassed or devalued because of our gender. Then we also expanded our title, we're women and gender studies. We also welcome men and non-binary individuals who want to join us and take classes to learn about gender identity, the media, sexuality, health, social issues, and social dilemmas. We have so much to offer in terms of classes related to film, global feminism, so many different topics that you can cover if you come take classes with us in Women and Gender Studies. Uh, for me, it's been phenomenal to be a Chicana working on gender issues on the border because it allows us to create boundaries about what is important for women, but also create bridges with other people addressing gender issues. So working with colegas in Ciudad Juarez on uh, safety and public safety of women, addressing gender violence on both sides of the border, addressing human trafficking. Uh, there, these are all conferences where we've participated either as scholars or as performers because we also do performance art. And I found that art is a wonderful tool to allow us to do performances and, and not have too much uh, baggage in terms of how we can do a quick performance and communicate directly with the public. So whether we do it in Spanish or in English or bilingual, we have done uh, Yo Soy Teatro, looking at the women of the Americas. We've done Ya Basta, Enough is Enough, talking about sexual harassment and sexual violence and those type of related topics, and they've been very powerful ways of communicating with our audiences. So again, welcome to Women and Gender Studies. We invite you to make this your home away from home and to come visit us and come take classes with us. It'll absolutely change your way of thinking, the way of looking at the world, and hopefully you will join us in seeing yourself with a feminist point of view and as an ally, uh, seeking and, and struggling and fighting and celebrating. Uh, access to equity and justice in our communities and in our lives. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Kadiri Vaquer Fernandez. I'm a visiting assistant professor of women's and gender studies. I also teach for the Department of Creative Writing and for languages and linguistics. This is my second year here at the University of Texas, El Paso. Since I started working here in 2019, I've been teaching a course called Gender and Popular Culture. This is by far one of my favorite courses to teach. When I ask my students why they decided to enroll in this class, many students say that they enrolled because they thought that this would be a class addressing women's issues, that this would be a class about feminism, that this would be an opportunity for students to learn more about the LGBT community, especially their local community, and it would teach them ways to be allies. A smaller group of students, more specifically cisgender men in the class, usually think that this course is going to focus on women's issues and women's issues alone. 
and they enroll in the course hoping to become allies, hoping to learn more about women's experience. I'm always curious about how they reach this conclusion because the class is gender and popular culture. It's not women's issues. It's not about feminism alone. And for some reason, a lot of male students seem to think, especially cisgender men, that the class is not going to have anything to do with their experience, but rather the experience of women. I find this very interesting because what it means is that when students read gender, they read women's issues, they read feminism. However, they're in for a treat. When they enroll in this class and as the semester starts to evolve, they realize that what we're really doing is we're reflecting on representation, we're reflecting on dominant messages, how the media ultimately shapes our desires, how the media also promotes in different agents of socialization, promote heterosexuality, conventional forms of masculinity and of femininity. By the end of the course, many students realize that dismantling sexism, racism and classism is not only a benefit for the women, for women's experience or for the experience of non-binary or non-conforming individuals, but it's also beneficial for the experience of everyone, men included. At the end of the course, many students say that it has been a transformative experience to be able to reflect on their upbringing, on their relationships, on their embodiments of masculinity and femininity, and also to really reflect on the way the media and popular culture is constantly imposing and trying to shape um, and encourage restrictive forms of selfhood. Many of the students share that they wish that their parents and that their family members and their significant others could take these courses as well. Unfortunately, this isn't always possible. But what ultimately happens is that these students take their learnings and take their experiences home. They take them to their friends. They take them to their partners, to their communities. And I feel like this is radical and is transformative and is one of the huge contributions of taking courses in women's and gender studies. Thank you. Sure. Hi, uh, my name is Roberto Avanmir. I'm a professor in communication. Communication and media studies is my field. And uh, here at UTEP, I've been teaching uh, film classes. And I have an affiliation with uh, Women's and Gender Studies. And the Women's and Gender Studies program is a really special program to me uh, because it's, it's intersectional and it's interdisciplinary. And what I mean by that is when you, when you teach classes with, with uh, Women's and Gender Studies and when you interact with students and the people that you're working with, you're dealing with people from all over the university, right? So I'm a communication and media professor and you have people in sociology and history and English and political science uh, and even people that are, are defined as uh, women's and gender studies, you know? Um, and I think that's a really special thing. Whenever you can, as a professor or as a teacher and even as a student, uh, interact with people and work with people that are dealing with the interdisciplinary things, right? I think that's a very special thing. Um, and for me, what it means is, uh, for example, women's and gender studies is typically historically taking as like feminism, right? Which it is. And it's uh, often female professors teaching classes about, about women, women's studies, feminism, women's issues. But it also can be men teaching things like masculinity studies. Uh, and that's really interesting to me. And then you also have uh, people in the, that are teaching like queer studies, right? Uh, and they intersect with uh, gay, gay rights issues and, and the history of of gay people and uh, there's all kinds of things. Gender is part of this, right? So it's it's feminism, it's masculinity, it's it's queer theory and gay studies. It's uh, all kinds of layers, and I find that stuff really really interesting as a as a professor, as a researcher. I find that stuff really interesting. What it means for me and how it matters to me is, for example, um, I teach film classes here at UTEP, and and recently I've been teaching a uh, a class on Spanish director named Pedro Almodóvar. Uh, who is a little bit of an independent film director, kind of considered artsy, not a lot of people know him. He's not, he's not super mainstream, although he kind of is mainstream and already super famous and, and really accomplished. Uh, but for me, that means that I get to focus on a class like that and I get to cross it with women's studies uh, because uh, some of my film students are interested in taking a class on a director, but in uh, women's and gender studies, they might be interested in taking a class on a queer director or on a director that has also been called a feminist, right? Uh, and when I get to teach a class on somebody like Pedro Almodovar, who's weird, who's punk, 
who's uh, been notorious for doing, you know, making sort of, you know, crazy weird films, but has also got these feminist elements and also has these queer elements. Uh, it's a perfect overlap, overlap for uh, women's and gender studies, and it's a kind of class that I love to teach, and I think students in, in, in women's and gender studies respond really well to that as well as other students. Um, hi, my name is Naomi Furtman. I'm a faculty lecturer with the Women and Gender Studies program. I've been at UTEP for seven years now um, as a lecturer in the Women and Gender Studies program. And I teach the intro course, both face-to-face -face and online, as well as a number of upper level electives. Um, my areas of interest with research are um, maternal health and uh, health access and health equity. Um, I'm going to talk today about reproductive justice and maternal mortality and why those are related to women and gender studies. Um, so women and gender studies helps us to understand the root causes of some of the most significant reproductive justice challenges that our society is facing. When we talk about maternal health equity, access to health care, or maternal mortality rates, it can be easy to think about these from a purely medical aspect. That's what we're trained to do in society. Why is it that more black women die in childbirth than white women? Medicine points to health factors that black women experience at higher rates than white women. Women in gender studies though, helps us, forces us to look at why it is that these health disparities exist in the first place. Using an intersectional lens, the base of women in gender studies education, let's consider the whole story. When we talk about maternal mortality, women in gender studies teaches us that we have to include and consider the whole person and the whole story. The gendered and racial pay gap, environmental health issues, generational trauma, the physiological impacts of stress on the body, access to health education, and discrimination in the healthcare system, just to name a few. All of these inequities are pieces of a puzzle that are causing the gap in our maternal mortality rates. But it's only when you be, are able to understand the true nature of the gap that we're able to begin to, to to begin the conversation about closing the gap. Without women and gender studies, we would be selling ourselves short in understanding the complex ways that we research and care for women and non-binary folks in, within the healthcare system. We need more care providers in all aspects of health to value and understand women and gender studies perspectives to best care for all people. Hi, uh, my name is Dr. Ann Horak. I've taught at UTEP for about 20 years and I teach in religious studies and women's and gender studies. Women's and gender studies is an important discipline that really looks at all of the different layers of what it means to be a woman. So for example, for myself as a white, cisgendered woman with education, with economic security, I might be very emotionally satisfied and drawn to this idea of a sisterhood of all women, but in fact, that's not the reality. In fact, there is a great deal of diversity within the label of women, and there are many women who are oppressed by multiple identities. They intersect the oppression of race, of economic inequality, of uh, the, the of sexism, of homophobia, of misogyny. And it is so important for there to be an academic discipline that delves into all of the different ways women are both identified and all of the different intersections of their identities and of their oppressions. For example, right now we are seeing an economic recession and many people are calling it a she-session because it is hitting women so much harder than it is hitting men. But when you delve into the data, it's actually hitting women of color much more harder than it is hitting white women. It's important for us to know that because if we are going to fight inequality, we have to truly understand all the levels at which inequality operates. My name's Flora Newberry. Uh, I just got a gender studies certificate at UTEP I originally came to UTEP from the Philadelphia area uh, to go back to school to get my master's degree in music education um, at the age of 52. 
I, I love UTEP for being a place that encourages non-traditional students. And while I was there, um, I developed all kinds of other interests <laughs> in musicology, humanities, and, uh, and then eventually uh, I met Dr. Nunez in the uh, gender studies department and I decided to get a gender studies certificate. That led me to all kinds of interesting things, but one thing it led me to was to uh, rediscover, kind of rediscover myself. Uh, I, I was raised in the 70s by a dad that was a labor union organizer, and also a semi-professional folk singer. And uh, my studies with Dr. Nunez really started bringing, bringing me back to that part of my life with labor union songs and also some feminist songs and places where labor union songs and feminist songs cross over. Uh, so I brought this record with me by a lady named Bobby McGee, Bread and Raises, Songs for Working Women. This is one of the records that I was raised on. And so uh, I wanted to share with you guys a song from this record, which is called The Ballad of the Working Mother. Kids were only babies when their daddy went away. So I hung up my apron and I went to work for pay. They put me on the night shift working on a big machine. That was the last of normal life my kids have ever seen. Well, I am a working mother, working hard to earn my pay. In the factory through the long dark night, I sleep near half the day. They say I should be happy, that my pay it ain't too bad. They forget I'm the only parent that my kids have ever had. I hired a babysitter, she made half as much as me. She watched the television while my babies, they ran free. Well, I finally found a good one, and she treated them just fine. But it hurt to see them give her all the love that should be mine. Well, I am a working mother, working hard to earn my pay. In the factory through the long dark night, I sleep near half the day. They say I should be happy that my pay it ain't too bad. They forget I'm the only parent that my kids have ever had. As the years went by, I learned my job and half the men's jobs too. They like to let me use their tools and see what I could do. They'd pat me on the fanny and they'd tell me I was cute. For a decent job with equal pay, that's your some substitute. Well, I am a working mother, working hard to earn my pay. In the factory through the long dark night, I sleep near half the day. Oh, they say I should be happy that my pay it ain't too bad. They forget I'm the only parent that my kids have ever had. I went to see the foreman and I told him of my skills. I knew if I could get that job, it would help to pay my bills. Well, the foreman, he said, honey, we just can't do that, you see. That job is for a working man who has a family. Well, I am a working mother, working hard to earn my pay. In the factory through the long dark night, I sleep near half the day. Oh, they say I should be happy that my pay it ain't too bad. They forget I'm the 